or exploring the wonderful benefits or proofs we enjoy as children of God. Number one, we're guided by the Lord. Number two, we're adopted by the Lord. And here's number three. Think about the word intimacy for a moment. When you think about intimacy, what do you think about? You probably think about loving someone. Most of the time we use that word in love, a romantic kind of relationship. Like, as you know for sure, I'm intimate with my wife. I have a level of intimacy with my wife that I have with nobody else on the face of the planet Earth. So because we know each other so well, we have this intimacy. I address my wife with different terms that I wouldn't use with anybody else. Same is true of my daughters. I use words to declare, to address my children that I wouldn't use for anybody else. Those are words that identify and exhibit our intimacy. I want to demonstrate something that you may not know, that the Bible says that you and I as children can have an amazing level of intimacy with the creator of the universe. Look again at the last part of verse 15 where it says, you receive the spirit of adoption and by him we cry, Abba, Father. If you're wondering what Abba is, let me tell you, it was the personal intimate address that a little baby would utter to their parents. It's an Aramaic word. Picture a newborn baby, several months old, just old enough to begin to barely form words, and this little baby looks out of the bassinet into the face of his mother or father and begins to form his first words, it says Abba. It's like our English word when a baby says Mama or Dada. It's the most basic baby talk term of endearment in any language. To me, it's amazing that is the word that's used here in the Bible, that we can cry Abba to God. Let's, let's learn something about this word, Abba. This word is only found three times in the entire Bible. And the first one is in the 14th chapter of Mark. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying before his crucifixion. He was distressed. He was burdened. He frankly was not too concerned about what was going to happen. And so he said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, and not what I will, but what you will. Now, you must understand, none of the Jews in the Old Testament ever called God Daddy. There are references in the Old Testament to God being called Father, and we find that in the New Testament also. Didn't Jesus tell us to pray and say, Our Father, which art in heaven? That's the more formal word, pateris in Greek. We get our word patrician, paternity, patriarch from the word pateris. But here Jesus uses that baby talk term of affection to God when he's praying in the garden. Do you understand how revolutionary that is? I mean, in the Old Testament, the Jews were afraid to even speak the name of God. When they came to that word that we translate Yahweh in the Old Testament, they wouldn't even speak it. They would substitute another word because they had a sense of God being so remote and so holy, they couldn't even speak his name. And then to imagine the disciples listening to Jesus as he fell on his face in the Garden of Gethsemane and he turned his face to heaven and he said to the creator of the universe, Daddy, I need some help. Talk about a level of intimacy they'd never experienced before. The amazing thing is that the Bible says that you and I can have that same level of intimacy with the creator of the universe. You and I, according to this scripture and the third reference, we can say to God, God, you are Abba, you are Daddy. We can know him that intimately. Now, you know, Jesus was distressed when he called God Abba. And I think the key word here, if you look again at verse 15, where it says, And by him we cry, Abba. That's an unusual phrase, to cry. It's one of those automatopoetic words, which means it's a word that's, the pronunciation of the word sounds like the word it's describing itself. This word cry was 
almost like a cry of distress or a cry of pain. It's the word Jesus used when he said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will crack open, cracking with praise. It's the word Jesus used when he was dying on the cross and it says he gave out a loud cry and gave up the ghost. That's the same word. So when it says cry, Abba, it doesn't mean you waltz into the presence of God and say, hey, Dad, how you doing? It means there are times in our lives when we're so burdened, we're so hurting, we're so distressed, we literally just have to cry out, Abba, Abba. Have you ever been so lonely where you thought you were the only person on the face of the earth? At those times, you can get on your face and say, Abba, I'm lonely. Has your body ever felt such pain you thought you'd never get any relief? You can get on your face before God and you can say, Abba, Daddy, I'm hurting. Have you ever been so discouraged you don't want to get up the next morning and the thought of next week or next month just drives you crazy? Whenever you're that discouraged, you can fall on your face and say, Daddy, I need your help. You see, what God's trying to say here is that when you're in his family, you can have the level of intimacy with him that's beyond human reason. Do you have that? Do you feel so close to God that you can say, Daddy, when you're hurting? That's one of our privileges as children of God. And by the way, it's one of the proofs too. When you call God Dad, think about all those benefits. You're guided by God. You're adopted by God. You have intimacy with God. And you may ask, how can I know I'm in the family? Well, we're going to take a look at that next time. Thank you, Lord, for the intimacy that we have with you. Because in our hearts, we hunger for relationship. And the only satisfying relationship in this life is with you. And I pray that we would better understand that when we cry out to you, you hear us. You hear us. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that intimacy. I thank you for the relationship. I thank you for choosing me. In Jesus' name, amen. I am chosen, not forsaken.